Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel and today I'm gonna walk you through the cup easel. Hey all, what's up? Welcome back to my channel and today I thought I would give you a preview on what I bring when I'm out sketching and plein air with my cup easel that I'm also going to walk you through in this session. So this, first of all, this is a backpack that I got at Decathlon. It's a sports company that may or may not be available where you are, but I like it because it holds space for um, two tripods. One is for my phone one actually you're on it and another one is for the easel itself and starting off with this tripod this is a Manfrotto Elements B3 it's um, carbon fiber so it's quite light and I did kind of prioritize weight I basically kind of shelled out a little bit of extra money in order to get this carbon fiber one because I'm a pretty like petite person so for me like weight does matter a lot when it comes to these things and um, it's a pretty cool tripod let me just show you so it extends like three ways there you go Manfrotto element Manfrotto element so it does extend quite a bit and I'm able to mount it up just do it yay high maybe a little bit higher just so you can see what is in frame but it's got like multiple pegs where you can extend it or you can extend the feet for quite a bit this one has like a this one ha can calibrate for the height which i really love so this green thing can calibrate for a height and here i've got like a quick quick lock quick stopper and i and i already attached like the bottom of this um this horseshoe this quick lock to my cup easel so that setting up would be that much easier next inside my bag there is this cup easel that is really pretty that i've attached this quick stop to if i keep saying this for the rest of the video and it's wrong i am really sorry and basically i just attach it like so it attaches really nice I just lock it in the bottom and it will open up to be an easel so what I do is I also usually attach my sketchbook over here so I can put it on there I can adjust this bottom nope not that one this bottom love in a little bit for it to be like horizontal and that's just basically how I set up my cup easel. It's quite straightforward and quick. Other parts of this bag, before I switch over the angle, I have this bottom pouch that keeps things level. Got my water container right here. I've also got this water thingy that could fit the slot. Let me show you in a bit. And I've got my paints that I really need to keep level because they're in this container. I know that there are some containers out there that are like a lot smaller. I bought it but i haven't used it yet this is still what i'm using i use that at home as well it's not that big really so i can just bring it out and lastly my brushes um these are from etcher but really i filled it inside my favorite brushes are these um rosemary three quarter inch brush and a couple of the etcher ones rosemary and the etcher Now let's switch up the view and we'll get to setting up. Okay, I'm just going to set up everything here and walk you through my cup easel really quickly while my stuff is there on the side. So this is the paper that just so happens to fit in between this little wedge right here. Um, there you go. So I really like it. Um, but really any paper would do. Usually if I'm even using like a looser leaf 
I would I would actually just tape the paper the watercolor paper straight onto the board and just close it that way because also if you just tape it close to the um, the easel itself it won't um, it won't really stick to anything because there's like a gap in between like this the gap is like this big and it's gonna stay dry and then the easel does come with this like magnetic tray I opted for an open tray and I just cleaned it recently you can actually take it out and I just cleaned it recently it used to have a lot of my colors dried in there and then I realized I don't actually paint with my easel frequent enough to keep these colors wet um, even though they actually do stay quite wet yeah this is magnetic and what I like to do is I like to attach my paper towel which I've already prepared in advance I like to attach my paper towel um, this is just regular kitchen towel here on the side like so so it hangs off and it doesn't really get in the way of my paints and then this is the cup pivot or cup holder so it does fit this um, this collapsible cup that comes with the cup easel if you, I think if you buy the add-on but because I'm a bit lazy and I know this doesn't really hold water it's gonna open water it's gonna set it down like that and for me that's enough but before that for block your view brushes I mentioned earlier this rosemary three quarters is like my favorite brush ever I'm also a really big fan of this etcher half brush and I always need like a sort of round brush to make um, little teeny tiny details so that fits right there I forgot to mention that that gray palette that you see is gray glass and the reason why I got great glass is because I um, I follow this artist named Andrew Pena and he likes gray because for gouache you can kind of see like how the color looks opaquely or how transparent the color is and if it's against gray it's also kind of like a neutral background so you can kind of see how light or how dark each color is and I've gotten to really like using a gray palette actually so much more than a white because it does give me that extra like oomph when I'm trying to pick out my colors and my mixes and maybe it's subconscious but I feel like I judge the colors better anyway it's a glass palette that is like detachable so it's not like glued onto the cup easel so you can easily take it out and clean it out or you can just take a wet rag and just um, wipe the surface down with like water and the gouache will just come right off because it's glass it's great okay back to the tour and lastly this is my white. I just used fresh white straight out of the tube to be able to get some opaqueness and also to mix in with everything. And I think we can start. Oh, but before that, I just want to show how I capture the process real quick for my camera. So I do use, um, if you watch my previous video, I do use an Insta360 Go 2 and I use the small rig setup. So I'm going to first clamp it down might put the water away just in case clamp it down here like the wood for cup easel is like sturdy enough to like handle this I am not worried about it in the slightest okay let me just angle okay let me show you there ah okay this is the small rig it's like a really fancy thing that actually um, what it's good at is actually just making sure every hinge is like super tight and I am not worried at all um, using my Insta360 camera to record this so I'm just gonna roughly estimate that it will hold the angle like so okay this is my Insta360 camera I'm gonna like detach it from this tripod And I'm actually going to be attaching it here. Ooh, heart attack. Okay. There you go. Gonna... Oops, sorry, bumped you there. Make sure it's like super tight. Gonna open it up. Angle it. And I'm gonna use my phone now to check the angle to see if this has like captured the whole scene. And I'm gonna start sketching.
currently I'm still using an airtight palette to bring all of my colors, mainly because every time I'm trying to pick out six colors to bring outside um, as like a limited palette kind of thing, I'm always trying to fumble around and figure out where those tubes are because I feel like I tend to um, bring it around a little bit and I move it between bags and I just thought it, it was so much easier if I can just take this palette and go. And besides, um, inserting that palette in the bottom of my bag actually keeps the palette quite upright. So not a lot of mixing happens. I mean, if you look really closely, you can see that the opera pink actually bled into the yellow. But really, every time I try to pick up the yellow or try to see if I could maybe get like an interesting mix of like yellow and pink and put it on the page, I really couldn't. So it's it's really like immaterial, I would say, like the whole bleeding part thing. Um, but of course, if you're particular about it, then maybe this is not the palette for you. But I would recommend like experimenting and figuring out what palette is good for you because I know that there's like those small um, more airtight palettes and I don't know I just currently like my setup and I don't see a need to change anyway I'm just trying to use like um, real loose washes over here trying to stick with this long brush for as long as possible and um, I did color the sky just like very transparently with Prussian blue and after that I just went in with like opaques um, not sure why, but yeah, so my primary like um, focus here is to merge shapes. This is like a problem that I always encounter, especially when sketching like nature and sketching greens, is that I could never really merge shapes together. I'm always trying to pick out the individual shapes, which never really works because there's just so much that goes on in like nature and in leaves especially. Like it's not as if we're gonna be there and draw every single leaf. So what I'm trying to do is trying to get the overall shape, the overall feel, and trying to make it as gestural as possible. Like, I realize that you cannot be halfway with these things. If you're, like, halfway, it'll kind of show and you'd be, like, um, a bit more inclined to put in more detail. So I'm trying to keep it as loose as possible. So I really decided, like, I would only draw the leaves in with that big brush. And I wouldn't use this small brush. Like, this small brush is only to detail in the flowers that are going to come later and also the branches and everything else like I'm not gonna be adding greens in with this small brush because then I'll just be caught up in the cycle and I really don't want that even though I feel like I'm kind of going back on my word a little bit like but these is just to add the um, highlights that I left out because I just covered a little bit too much with the branches and lastly I'm just adding a little bit of lavender color I'm trying to really judge if it's too light it's too dark um, you just gotta constantly keep on mixing mainly because everything is relative to each other. So maybe it's a light color, but then you're trying to put it onto a light background, so you need to make it even lighter. And then now I'm just trying to work on the front ledge and I'm adding dimension to it by drawing in the bricks. And when you can see that corner turn, then you know that, oh, this is where like the ledge starts and the ledge ends and where's like the top and where's the side of it. So that's really helpful. And now one thing that I really wanted to do is I wanted to do dry brush some texture on it because this is not a clean ledge. So I'm just grabbing some blue and I'm testing it out. I'm rubbing the water out on the paper towel and I'm just like slowly kind of um, brushing it against the paper in order to get that texture. <laughs> All right, thank you so much you guys for tuning in till the end of this video. Let me know if you've tried the cup easel or if you've tried something similar and let me know how you like it. For me, like the pros of this is that it's super small, super lightweight, but even so for me, it's still a little bit bulky. So it is not my like everyday, I will carry it everywhere kind of setup. It's more so like I am going outside to paint setup. So it does take a little bit of intention and a little bit of planning. Like I can't just pull it out of my bag immediately and start sketching, but it's good enough for me so far. But I am looking to get a smaller rig somehow um, because I want to be able to bring it out when I'm going to work. And I already have like a laptop in there, so I want something else that's like a little bit um, smaller, a little bit more compact. I don't mind working with like small palettes, like an art toolkit. So I'm really excited to explore whatever's out there. Thank you guys so much again for staying tuned until the end of the video. As always, I've been Becky, you've been awesome, and I'll see you in the next one. Happy sketching! Bye!